Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be showing about an amazing aquarium snail you have in your tank, the rabbit snail. I really like these guys due to the huge variety of bright colours and patterns these come in, as there are many species of rabbit snails. They also grow to different sizes, with adult species reaching over 4 inches long and some being as small as 1 inch only. In an aquarium, these snails will live between 3 to 5 years and will generally keep growing until then. But the best part of these snails are that they will not overtake your tank like a lot of other snails do. Welcome to the world of crams and stay tuned as I will be talking about how to look after and breed these snails for your aquarium. As I mentioned earlier, these snails come in a range of sizes depending on their species. For your larger variants, which are the more common ones, I recommend getting a tank of 15 gallons or larger, as they are quite big and will move around a lot. Although these can still do well in a smaller tank, other variants such as your mini rabbit snails would be much better suited for these nano tanks, as they only reach 1 inch long. For food, rabbit snails are good scavengers and will eat some types of algae and plant matter. Although they aren't fussy eaters, I would still supplement their diets with stinking pilots or algae wafers and blanched vegetables as they definitely do eat a lot and are more active as a result. In terms of water parameters, these guys are quite hardy. However, you still want your ammonia and nitrite to be at zero always. Wild caught rabbit snails originate from lake regions of Sulawesi where water temperatures are between 28 to 30 degrees Celsius or 82 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit in a pH range between 7.5 to 8.5. With tank bred rabbit snails, these can be kept down to 26 degrees Celsius with slightly alkaline waters of pH 7.2 to 8.5 to prevent shell erosion. Because of this, I recommend finding out where yours would come from so you can adjust your parameters accordingly. I find that the hardness and tedious of the water isn't too important with these guys as they thrive in both soft and hard water aquariums. However, one thing you should always be careful of is adding any copper medication into the aquarium. Like other invertebrates, these are extremely sensitive to copper and it's best to use another type of medication or to remove the snails. For the tank setup, decorations that can allow them to hide are needed, and this can be ornaments, rocks or driftwood. Personally, I have found that shrimp breeding tubes such as this works really well for both juveniles and adults as they can crawl through. Any type of fine substrate such as sand or small gravel is needed as they will dig around a lot. With plants, hardy plants such as Anubias or Java fern works really well with these snails as they won't eat it. You can have rabbit snails in a planted tank, but if they are hungry, they will eat a lot of your softer stem plants. Moving on to tank mates, rabbit snails are very peaceful and will not attack anything. But this also means that they need to be kept with other non-aggressive tank mates. For example, with fish, most live bearer species and other small fish like danios can work just fine. Cherry shrimp and Sulawasi shrimp are also regularly kept with these snails as they work really well together. In the wild, these snails live in the same areas as the Sulawasi shrimp and they form a, and they form a symbiotic relationship. If kept together, you can see a lot of the time that the shrimp would be cleaning the snails or eating their waste and this will apply to cherry shrimps as well. So now that you know how to look after rabbit snails and set up a tank for them, I will be moving on to breeding. Rabbit snails reach sexual maturity when they are roughly 1 years old, or about 2 inches. Unlike most other snails, these are not hermaphrodites and will either be a male or a female. This makes breeding a bit more difficult as you cannot tell the gender by their appearance. Because of this, I recommend buying at least 3 or more snails so that you have a higher chance of getting mixed genders in your snail colony. 
I also find that regular feedings with nutritious foods will allow the snails to increase their breeding rates and this is probably to do with the fact that the females use a lot of energy for this. Females will give birth every 4-6 to six weeks and they do so by releasing a white egg sac holding the baby snail. After a few days, this will hatch into a fully formed baby around a third of an inch long and will start eating the same foods as the adults immediately. Because of such a large baby, rabbit snails will only give birth to one or two snails each time and so the breeding rates are extremely slow and they will not overpopulate your aquarium. One interesting thing about these snails is that different species can breed with each other creating hybrid snails with different patterns and colours. Because of this, I recommend keeping one species only per tank if you're trying to breed them. I hope you have enjoyed this video and have learnt something from it. If you're looking to buy some of these snails, I recommend buying from private breeders, checking on shrimp selling websites or calling your local fish stores as they are still rare and not available everywhere. Anyway, thanks for watching and please leave a like and subscribe for more future videos. Thank you.